Okay. Yay. All right. What do we? Uh. No. Back further. All right. How do we go this? I don't know. Finn Thone reporting in, and welcome to Brotherly Converse, and welcome our guest. What? Do we, Sukumaru. Sorry, I can't remember what's name. We can change it if we want. What? You don't want? You don't like Sukumaru anymore? I like Zulkin better. Zulkin. Okay, welcome Vulcan. I have identity issues. <laughs> so, all right, how do we start this discussion? Pretty much, like, of course. When do you want to start the discussion? Well, pretty much just timeline puns. Oh. <laughs> um. All right. Well, let's see. Okay. Oh, like, how do we like? I know that the main question, or at least the biggest question, is what do we want from Star Trek? I mean, like, all right, like, first off, of course, we know that the main, we know that the first point is to do, you know, space exploration, and then because of writing or plot writing, uh, we have like, you know, exploring. I guess you could say the human condition and social commentary as well, and some history social commentary you know mm. like so um even to the point where they have like you know some some of the aliens sort of just being echoes of history like you know the i think the klingons are japanese eastern asian-ish um oh kardashians are kardashians not kardashians there's no s i mean there's no h or is that I don't remember any S's in Cardassia or Kardashian. Cardassian. Keeping up with the Cardassians. For <laughs> uh, once, I hear that joke. Um, but like, I remember that here. I I would remember hearing that they that they were echo, that they were akin to not necessarily Nazis, although some people would make that claim. I would say they're very based, European based. That. Yeah, I want to... They I, give that kind of vibe now that I think about like it. Like, high nobility kind of thing. You know, like, we are better, and we can make you better if you only listen to us and do what we say. I don't know, that kind of stuff. And I guess you could say, like, and actually, and actually uh, recently in the re I year, I found out that Ferengis can be considered not Buddhist, but well, they believe in reincarnation, so that's like that's Buddhism. Oh, okay, then Buddhism with greed. Ouch! <laughs> it's odd. Um, I feel bad for greed. Yeah. Uh, so we got plenty of social commentaries, right? And though, of course, we always need a setting to have what kind to have. That kind of exploration and social commentary mm -hmm. and human conditions and such. Now let's try to go through the list. We've had the original series, so they could have gone what, whichever which way they wanted with that. Mm -hmm. Next generation is supposed to be like, well, eighty to hundred years later, dependent on who you go by. Yeah, and at least according to generations, it is eighty years later. Hmm. Wait, no, it was about 100 according to the end of the original series. 80 years, whenever the Enterprise B went on its main voyage. I've been, I've been saving planets while your grandfather was in diapers. That was a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, but next generation, uh, you could say it's just like continued adventures just further down the timeline and more advanced technology in comparison. Well, yeah, it is more advanced. It's a century later. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, we got, let's see, what I like to consider the War Times DS9. True. Lost in Space with Voyager. Lost in Space, yeah. And then we got a prequel, a prequel series with Enterprise. Mm-hmm. And then the very, well, 
I want to say controversial, but only because of you know people, some people not liking it, and some people like liking it. J.J. Abrams, the Kelvin timeline. Yes, Kelvin. You hush phone. Okay. That's what I was... All right. Oh, you're recording. Special guest star. <laughs> Here, I can pause. All right. Let's see. Uh, pre. We left off on, uh, let's see, um, we got a prequel series in Enterprise, hmm? and then, J then the Kelvin timeline, and then more recently, I think, whenever we got Discovery. Yeah, that's the most recent series. Yeah, and that one's supposed to take place between both Enterprise and the original series. Ten years prior, if I recall hearing that correctly. Right. But here's one issue that I'm kind of feeling, or just one I've had at least, I don't know. When are we going to return to the Prime timeline? And are we going to continue where we left off? Like... Is, is this Discovery now part of the... Prime timeline or is well, that Kelvin timeline? Well, last I knew, Discovery was supposed to, what is part of the Prime timeline, and you know the Prime timeline only the like. Actually, I'm pretty sure like you know the the Kelvin timeline doesn't start until between Enterprise and Discovery. Mm. For sake of argument, but what I mean is that. I'm so used to the Kelvin timeline that if I want to go back to the Prime timeline, I have to go back to any of the shows, that, any of the, well, as far as I'm concerned, like any of their five previous shows. And I'm not including Discovery because, well, I've yet to watch it, so I'm not sure if I can count it. Yeah, I haven't seen either thanks to CBS All Access. Ugh. See, and that to me is just annoying. I hear it's really good. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they only aired the ep first episode on television and the rest is only on available on CBS All Access, I'm just like, why? What? They could have done both! They could have, but they chose not to. I think it's just their way of getting money. Ah, uh, bullshit. At least that's the way I think of it. No, it makes... No, it makes... It's, it's a dick move, but it makes... I never sense. said it wasn't. But it makes sense for the sake of money. Uh... But no, what I'm like, what I mean is that like, I'm not sick of the Kelvin timeline. I wouldn't mind exploring more of it. But what I want is to return to the Prime timeline and continue where we left off. Because you see, in the Prime timeline, furthest we got is like, well, as far as DS9, then a little bit further with Voyager. However, that doesn't take place in what in our no in the known part of the galaxy except for their last I checked DS9 actually ran in tangent with Voyager it did yes it did up until their up until the last <clears throat> two or three seasons then Voyager was the only one was the only one on the air hmm um did not know that one I just knew that they ran in tangent they, they did and so then you know then Voyager is the furthest TV show timeline but then we have Star Trek Nemesis, which is even fur which is which would be further than that because Janeway's an emerald. Yeah, so it takes place after. So it takes place after Voyager, and that's the furthest we have in the timeline. And we are not with. And I can't say it, not quite. Now you were saying that there was. Something further than Star Trek Nemesis? Technically, yes, but we, it was only touched upon. I'm and that was in Enterprise with the Enterprise J. It's, like I said, technically, that is the furthest most. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you that, but then that's kind of like saying the same thing as if the All Good Things is the fir is the second furthest. In that, you know, with the series finale of uh, of next generation. Yeah, so it'd be kind of like saying that. Like, I'm not saying it it, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying that. Um, the I'm, I'm also saying just like in, in all technicality, that would be considered the furthest most. 
in my personal opinion, I could easily see them making that one as being like the final Star Trek series because that is the furthest one. Mm-hmm. And they can actually bring back some of the other characters from like uh, from Enterprise, like the, ta- the Time Traveler mm-hmm. that brought John to the to the 30 what was it 29th century Tw- 29th or 30th century 29th sounds right the 29th century like they could bring him back they could actually show how the war with um oh, what was their names the Zindi what? like how the Zindi actually became part of the Federation and how uh, the people who made the weapon in Enterprise that the that gave to the Zindi to, in order to destroy that part of Earth. Hmm. Like, we could see, like, how that began. Or even its conclusion. Because we don't know how that ended. It's hinted that everything gets all settled. Yeah. Since they failed in their in their mission with the Zindi. Hmm. But that's only up for speculation at best. That's what I'm saying. Like, if we, they were to go back to the prime timeline, I think the most optimal choice would actually be for Enterprise J. Not to mention, I would not mind honestly seeing actual model of that starship. It's supposed to be the largest version, oh, and, and I want to see it other than just a diagram. They actually did have plans on having like a visual of a, a visual of it. Once. They do have it. It's in the it's in one of the episodes. No, no, like like an outside view of the ship. They actually planned on having it on the episode, but they didn't get to aside from having like a just a background. Yeah, just, of it. just just like a background window. Yeah. Actually, actually, half of that ship, minus the saucer, that ship was like actually part of a part of a concept design for Voyager. I can see it. Yeah, but minus the mi- minus the saucer section. I don't know. I still would have loved to have seen it. Not to mention how it would have actually scaled with the other ships. I mean, I know it's is it considered a universe class. Yes, a universe ca- universe class ship, and I've actually I've actually seen someone actually pilot it instead of a Star Trek Online, and it is huge. Yeah. Like, I mean, I haven't played online, but I can only imagine based on what I've seen. Like, of people actually making the uh, measurements. Uh. Like, in comparison to all the other ships. Because technically, most all the Enterprises, yes, start uh, for Star Trek Next Generation, the Enterprise D is considered the largest, but E is considered the longest. Yeah, like, here, I'll say this. Uh, I don't think, from what I remember, the big... Uh, the so, you, all right, do you remember the Nebula class? Nebula class. I think so. A fourth of that is not. A, that's not. One Nebula class doesn't doesn't even equal a fourth of the size of a of a universe class. I don't remember how many meters it was classified to be yet. No, it's just what I remember. Although I know that in terms of the Kelvin timeline compared to the Prime timeline. The um, Enterprise in the Kelvin timeline is the is the size of the Enterprise E, in terms of its sheer length alone. Yeah, that yeah. That Personally, ha- I think that accommodates it a lot better, makes it more realistic. Because two hundred and eighty eight meters isn't that long. <laughs> they actually have some background story on why of the size change, which I kind of wish they actually put um, maybe somehow explain that in the film. Because they mentioned nothing in the film. Like, like for the longest time, until I looked up background stuff, I just assumed that the ships were just the same size. Until eventually I realized... Wasn't it the appearance of Nero's ship that made them go big, get bigger? Well, yes, but that's that may be the chain of events of them that got it to being bigger, but they never really explain it in movie. Yeah, I recall that. Because I know that the vengeance is huge compared to um, compared to the Enterprise. Yeah. So, uh, actually, fun fact: there's Borg technology in that Romulan ship. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I don't know how, or I just, it's just something I read. But, I don't, like, what do we want to see from, like, what else do we want to see from the show? Like, what more can they do? Because, like, right now, from what, from the gist I understand on what they're doing with Discovery, prequel territory and all relevance to the original series, so prequel territory, and then, at time, modern uh, Federation officers dealing with ancient traditional Klingons. Because it doesn't ugh, doesn't uh, Discovery actually deal with the beginnings of the human Klingon war? I don't know that much. I'm because I know that happens before the original series, and it gets concluded with uh, with Undiscovered Country. Really? Yeah, that was the whole purpose of the Undiscovered Country. It was to settle a peace agreement between oh. the, between the Klingons and the Federation. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know. Well, I didn't know they were war, at war the entire time. I wouldn't say that they were at war, but there was definitely tension. I mean, yeah, let's let's go with that. There was definitely tension. Because there was Klingon territory, and there was Federation territory, and then there was the neutral zone. Mm -hmm. Where, of course, in the neutral zone, which is very common knowledge, that that's where the Federation and Kl and Klingon would be able to meet with, and that there wouldn't be any bad blood. Wait, I thought the neutral zone was with the Romulans. That too. I think it was also with the Romulans. Mm. I think that was kind of like the designated area of, if we are in this space... You, it's okay. Well, there was also that Paradise Planet that they had in Star Trek V. That was supposed to be a good... Like, that was supposed to be like at the center of the galaxy, I think. No, no, not the center of the galaxy one. The one, the planet at the beginning. And that oh, was like, oh, that three one, of them. the Cybok. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that is in the neutral zone. It's been a long time since I've seen those movies. At least three years. Hmm. Well, Oddly enough, I have them on DVD and I haven't watched them yet. <laughs> Shows you how much time I have in a six day work week. Uh, but, like, well, I don't know. On, okay, I don't know anything about them starting a Klingon war in Discovery, but for all I know, they probably are. But. Because I think they are showing tension between the Klingons and the Federation. I'm actually impressed that they're trying to do three captains in that. I didn't even know that they were doing three. Hmm. I was only aware of the black lady. Uh, but regardless... And that's not being racist or anything. That's just the only one I know. <sighs> just laying that one... Laying that one out there. But, like, what else do I want to see? Like, I actually remember... I actually remember through... I don't know, like, a, through, you know, through the grapevine that there were... That they have actually tried doing other Star Trek spin-offs before. Like, uh, let's see, one one uh, spin-off that they tried doing was like, you know, a series that would focus on mod, uh, mud. Mud. <laughs> yeah, and... I can only just imagine that being short-lived. Kind of like mud. If you think about it. What, he died? No, I don't know if he died. But it's just like... He, like... He his he's well known, but only through a few episodes. Oh. But, you, but you but whenever he is there, you know he's there. Okay. It's like with uh, Doctor Soon. You know of him through Data, right. but you don't really know him until they have Data and Lore meet the, meet him. Right. Yeah, that one episode, and uh. then you see him again in Enterprise. Wait. Oh! As the, as the one who created the augments. I... Is that how it all started? I mean, I haven't gotten that far, but I have some awareness of both augments making, a, making an appearance in the show, and also, uh... Well, Brett Spiner makes an appearance. Yeah. I think that's supposed to be the same guy, if not at least a relative of Dr. Soon. Because I know that the augments are based off the same technology that created the augments that were in the original series with Khan. I actually like that how they finally explained the smooth, smooth foreheads for the Klingons oh, yeah. and actually made it in... Oh. 
actually made a good explanation, or at least I think it is. Um, Personally, for me in Enterprise, I really liked how they actually showed the religious conversion of the Vulcans. How it used to be one way, and, and it wasn't the way that we knew it from the original series, or in Next Generation, it was different, and it wasn't until a certain object that was found that they act that the religious fighting amongst the, the Vulcans actually started taking place. It was in season four. Hmm. It was like, for example, um, mind melding. It was forbidden. Oh, I've heard. It was, it was originally forbidden. I've heard something of that. Of but in something. the original series, as well as Next Generation, it's practically commonplace. Yeah. But in, in in Enterprise, it was forbidden. There were several other things that were considered forbidden as well for the Vulcans, but weren't in the original and going progressively forward. Hmm. So the fact that they showed that conversion was really good because it showed that they actually had change. Vulcans, who are known to be very solid in what they are, <laughs> keeping true to not having emotion, them, sh sh the, the, them showing change is like growing up, kind of like with, um, like with Leonard Nimoy's predicament with Spock. I don't know if you know that at all. But the reason why he wanted to have Spock killed off in yeah. Khan was because he hated the character. There was no character development. He hated portraying the character the way it was. Mm -hmm. That's why he agreed to, if he was going to be uh, playing the role of Spock, the only way he was going to do it is if he was going to die. Mm. Due to the fans' upset, they wanted him back. He said yes, but it's not going to be the same Spock that was in the original series or any other time before that. Mm. And that gave Spock the ability to grow and expand as a character. Hmm. It's kind of like that. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, but the only thing I remember... But the only development that I'm remembering right now is just Spock re learning how to sing Row, Row, your, row, 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 row Your Boat. Well, that's just not how Kirk did it. Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Do you know Row, 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 Row Your Boat? <laughs> <laughs> row, Row, Raggy. <laughs> Ruh-roh, ruh uh, Okay, um... Uh, let's see, um, another, uh... Pilot idea that they had was... I keep on forgetting the name of the guy, the name of the guy, but I know the show was... They sort of had a pseudo-pilot with one of the episodes in the original series. And it was supposed to be based on, like, it was supposed to be centered around the one... Agent 31? No, not that's Section 31. Uh, I mean... You say you don't know much of the original series, right? I know bits and pieces here and there. I also know the Menagerie, which was pieces taken from the cage, which was the original pilot. They were... Okay, well, I know that, I know that they had a pseudo-pilot in one of the episodes of the original series where it was supposed... where the show would have been based around this one human character that was somehow raised by aliens, trying to and trying to help something to do with NASA and have a, oh, I don't know a cat about assistant. That one. I don't know, like uh, John would know, but I already forgot the name of it. I don't know, like uh, agents of yesterday. No, I don't know some kind of agent, some kind of agent type of character. Mm. Um, and oh, something that I really would have liked to see, which we could have. I would have liked to have gotten during the 90s was like a ship based on the on a, sh a s show following the adventures of the Excelsior starring George Takei. That honestly would have been really good. Yes! We could have seen the Excelsior class ship just flying through space and then we could have had more Takei adventures. Like, not that, like, you know, like, yeah. um. Because the Excelsior class was the next one for Enterprise B, wasn't it? Yeah, actually it was. That's what I thought. Uh, I honestly would have been behind that one completely. Not not just for the fact of it being decayed, but just for the fact of a different Enterprise other than, you know, the original or D or anything like that. Mm. But, like, I know that with Next Generation we had a small glimpse at Enterprise C for only, like, two episodes. I thought it was only one. 
Really? Was it only one? I, I, I thought it was. I thought it was two. I, Either way, it was the fact that we saw we got to see the Enterprise C, which went missing. Yeah. And I have that model on my shelf, but the fact that we only see it for just a small little bit is kind of disappointing. It's kind of funny that we got to sit that we saw the ship like we started saw the ships in a in in an inaccurate order. A D C B E F G. <laughs> I mean, because like yeah, you're not wrong. I mean. You're like, not wrong. Yeah, I know. Like, you know, cause like, okay, sure, Enterprise A, we get Enterprise A in Star Trek Four or whatever. But then we skip to D. I, you would. I think. Expect- I think it was supposed to show that that it had been considerable time between the original and and, and next, next generation. generation because we were, we left off at A, which was which was the last time we saw it, it was to be decommissioned, mm-hmm. I, but after. Uh, the end of Undiscovered Country. Mm. And then we suddenly have Enterprise D that is supposed to show that it is literally the next generation following the original series. I guess it does, that does make sense. I mean, um, I mean, sadly, we never got to see the Enterprise B until after the series ended mm. with Generations. I like that film. I like Generations. Even though it's an odd number film, it is definitely one of my top favorites. Yeah. I, I know that the odd number films do get a lot of hate, and for good reasons. Mm. But honestly, Generations was probably my favorite amongst the odd number films, or even just amongst them in general. Yeah. And, Follow, like, and then there was uh, Khan. Uh. Like, those two for me are, like, neck <coughs> neck for, for the number one. Mm. Generation as Riker would like. I will say that I'll, that like there are maybe a couple flaws that I recognize. Like for one thing, you know the saving like when they're trying to save the planet, the planet we never get to see the civilians that were that were saving at the end. Mm-hmm. But I can say that N- Generations is one of my earliest examples that I have on where you can make a transition of a movie version of a TV show. You know, and of course, it has like, and also on another another way, it's like, R.I.P. Rest in peace, Enterprise D, kind of. As I and, should also and add. eventually Scotty. Scotty showed up in one of the episodes of Next Generation. Yeah, he did, but he didn't. Yeah, but he's also dead. Yeah. But no, I was just. Um, hmm. So that just made me start to think, like amongst all the characters, the characters versus the actors in Star Trek, the first one amongst the characters to die is Kirk, and he's still one of the one, one of the only ones left. We got D. Forrest Kelly who died a while back, and then. Scotty and then Leonard Nimoy who passed away a couple years back. Yeah. We still have Nichelle Nichols. Yeah. And George Decay. He's, Check- still a- he's still active on Facebook. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm subscribed to him, too. And, so, uh, same. Chekhov. He's still alive. Oh. And William Shatner. So even though that's, there's only four of them left, at least of the prominent characters mm-hmm. that, are, that were... Well, probably, but primary characters. Mm-hmm. He was the first. The Kirk was the first one to die amongst the actual characters themselves. Mm. Technically, if we were to go by their standpoint, he did die. He yeah. was reported killed in action, even though as an actor he's still active. Oh, great, now I just remember the Shatnerverse. I sh- should I be concerned? That depends. Are you concerned about Sh- William Shatner's ego? I've always been concerned about it. Then you should be concerned. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Wrote, oh wrote, no. He wrote a couple of books. Oh that no. That continued the stories of Kirk, and one of them somehow included the like the Borg obtaining Kirk's bo- dead body and, tr- and Borgifying it. Borgifying. Well, that's not. Assimilating. <laughs> I'm sorry. I li- I like that one more than assimilation. I forgot. The- I forgot the word assimilate. <laughs> I'm gonna use that from now on. Borgify. So, like, 
And that's all I remember about it, but I don't know, someone did some research on this and just like, you know, like, just... More Kirk in the Shatnerverse. Mm. Uh, yeah, but going back to the original topic, like, oh, sorry, like no, no, because we got off on that one for a little bit. Yeah. But again, I personally would like to see like the actual war where the Zindi are actually involved in the Federation, or like how they even got to the Federation, oh. like how they became part of it. True. I mean, like, uh, not to, since there's, I think they said there's five different races of Zindi. All of, not all of them could have joined willingly, like at first. Not willingly, but just at first. Yeah, but I'm wondering if that would be semantics or something. Well, no, okay, I don't know how to use the word semantics, but, um... I'm wondering if that's something that would be filling. In other words, just like, you know, in, in between... Uh, like, or, like, maybe if the series were to start, that part of the Zindi uh, race was already part of the Federation, but the other part doesn't want to be because of their history. Because they were still, uh, because they still felt so strongly against the Federation because of what happened in in Enterprise. Like that could be like near the beginning, because something that we already know about. Okay, cool. Let's get it. Something that everyone's familiar with. We're done. Let's move on. Well, I guess, I guess that is a good idea. I mean, I'm not like or I'm not saying they're exactly this example is exactly the same thing, but like. Um, like, I've watched all of DS9, and they, throughout all of DS9, they're having the, the idea of, like, uh, having uh, the Bajorans join the Federation. Hmm. And, but some Bajorans are not for the, uh, join, the joining of the Federation, because, I don't know, like, you know, Bajor needs, needs to stand on it their own two feet. Yet, the Federation wards off the Cardassian... Uh, wards off the Car you know wards off the Cardassians and well Bajor is I don't want to say an underdeveloped planet but you know they're not on par technology level as the Federation or even the Klingons well humans did get help from the Vulcans <laughs> yeah um, so like <clears throat> so like that kind of situation, but you know, like in there, but yeah, their main point. They could probably take a few note. They probably could take a few notes from a few notes from DS Nine and like for the idea of your uh, Zindi thing. Like you know. the one thing I would just hope, like if this were to ever come to light, um, I hope they don't use anyone that was related to any Star Trek captain or any Star Trek character beforehand and, the, and the, the, that the character like for who would be in command of the ship would be a completely original character like like Jonathan Archer was oh cause just like how Picard was to, to Kirk or like how Janeway she was the first female captain to, well, okay not not first female captain in terms of the series as a whole but the first female captain to be focused on right because I know that there have been other female captains. Yeah. But Janeway is a primary one. But, like, all the captains are different in their own way. My hope is that if they were to ever do a continuation, they would keep with that trend. Because the last thing that they would need is to have someone who is connected to any of the previous Star Treks. Except for maybe... Uh, no, I don't, I don't think Data would be part of it. I think he's neural network. No, that's right. Did is did is dead. Spoilers. Well, but B four isn't. Actually, actually, eventually, uh, f uh, B four sort of becomes Data, and now this is like instead of a comic, I think. I wouldn't know anything about the comics. Well, I don't know either, but this is something I heard where like eventually Data become you know Data resurfaces through B four. And actually, does, and when Picard retire, uh, retires, he actually retires. Yeah, he didn't take Kirk's advice. Don't tell me you don't remember that. Kirk's advice was not to get promoted. No, he asked about retirement. Oh well, he did say. Well, was that? He, well, he said he was. He asked I him if he was captain of the Enterprise. He said, "Are you thinking about retirement?" I never thought of it. Well, let me tell you something. Don't. 
Don't, don't let them promote you. Don't let them do anything. So you were partly right, but he did ask initially about retirement because that is what happened to him. Because he found retirement lonely. I could be wrong. Maybe it was maybe maybe he became a diplomat instead. I right well, now. Well, if he were if he did retire, then he just didn't stick to Kirk's advice. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I know. I know. He, he either retired or became a di- diplomat. Um, and then date. So now Data became the captain of the of the Enterprise E. Hmm. And actually, oh, yeah, that's right. They did make me E. Yep. Okay. So I was thinking of all good things version of Enterprise D. Oh, the Galaxy X. That yes. used to be cool. Or still you, is. I was about to say used to be. I, my my mistake. Like I just still a cool shit. Oh, absolutely. Mm. I wish there was a way to actually modify my model so that I can actually look like it. There probably is an actual kit for it. Let's see. Um, but actually, one. All right, this is not. It's not necessarily Star Trek. What, what I wanted out of this, but I do remember actually wondering and that once I, like I want to. I kind of want to ask Brent Spiner his opinion on like now of course he probably he, okay he wouldn't do it now right but if then he had the chance to and not necessarily as data but just in general as like you know like for his own character do you i'm wondering if he would have or if he could or could have been a captain of a starship in his own series not necessarily Star Trek in general, but I guess for the sake of argument of this po- of this video, we could say like you know, do you, could Brett Spiner be the be the next Star Trek captain, whether Data or not? It would either be him or it could even be Riker. I mean, I know, and spoilers ahead, but um, I know that at the end of Enterprise, I don't know if you you've seen all of Enterprise, right? Did they show the lunar class? I'm not talking about ships. I'm talking about who you find out who the chef is on the Enterprise. It's Riker. There's a Riker on a... <laughs> no, 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 not not any Riker. It is the Riker. How? The entire series is a hologram. On the holodeck. Dude, I haven't even finished this show. That's why I asked. Well, now you know. Riker is the chef. He's the chef on, in the hologram. On the holodeck. What is life? What is the meaning of my life? And Am I, mean, I a hologram? I don't know. I mean, I could go into the Big Bang Theory on that one, but I'm not gonna. But, um... Essentially, the reason why he is running the Enterprise holo- hologram is for him to determine whether or not he is ready to become a captain. And he actually goes to Jordy, he goes to Troy, Data. I I think he goes to to Beverly as well for advice. Troy is the one who recommended a ship counselor because that's what she is. Mm -hmm. And that's the way, because one of his concerns was getting used to the personnel and how they would think of him. The ship's counselor at that point in time actually would have been the chef. Because a lot of people, like, on that ship, they talk to the chef just to talk. So he is the chef in the entire series. You never see the chef until the last episode. Where it's him. Is this why I have some awareness of where they show, like, where they kind of showcase a few starships, including a galaxy and a... Consular? Constitution. Constitution. Yes, that is the very end of the episode. Where it shows Enterprise D, the original, and um, the NX-01. Where they actually finish the quote. Like, they complete the entire original quote together. They boldly go where no man has gone before. That's the very last scene in, in the series. Sorry to spoil it for you. It's like saying that Enterprise is a spinoff on... is a Next Generation spinoff. It could, it could be more so of a side story, 
but at the same time, it's not because history continues the way it is. If that makes sense. True. I mean, I could fall like it all happened. It's just a simulation. Mm-hmm. The entire thing is a simulation run on the holodeck. How was I supposed to feel? I had very mixed feelings about the ending. Uh, okay. Okay. But that is how it ends. Because um, he's because Riker is very uncertain if he wants to become a captain, if he's or if he's even ready. Well, he's been having that. Well, if I'm aware of enough of Next Generation, he's had that issue for a long time. Oh, he's had that issue for a long time. But he but, was asked to, to be promoted to captain of his own ship. I think it was the Pegasus. No, no, he actually no. he got, he got no, the, not the Pegasus Titan. Titan, thank you. Yeah, uh, Pegasus was one that he sh- served on before Enterprise. Yeah, and yeah, Titan's a lunar class, and we have yeah. yet to see that on screen. But I've actually, but it's a really nice design. I I think I've seen the design for it as well, and that's what I'm thinking. Like, if they were to also go with that, um, what you we were saying before with Data being a captain, they could also show uh, Riker being a captain as well, like them working together. Hmm. Like that could like it could be like on occasion, where Riker is, is in command of the, of the Titan, but we don't know where Data would be if he's in charge of the Enterprise. I doubt he would, hmm. because and this is where the whole timeline thing is confusing. Is that technically that end the ending of Enterprise takes place before Generations? Because it's huh. on the Enterprise D. Huh. Personally, I didn't like that. I think it would have been a lot better for it to be on the Enterprise E. Because they... Ha- this is nothing against um, the actor who plays Riker. But... Jonathan Frakes. Yes, Jonathan Frakes. The, the name escaped me for a moment. Um, he's obviously grown some since the original... Since... Uh, uh, Next Generation, oh. where he was kind of slender during Next Generation. He got a bit bulkier in the, in the stomach area. Yeah. And it showed that in um, in the last episode. That's why I think that was a bit of a mistake on their part, because it shows that he's clearly aged. And in uh, First Contact and all the movies that followed after, he was still slender. Mm-hmm. Mind you, it could have been just a whole thing where he was stressing so much that he was eating a lot. But I don't see Riker being that kind of guy. Yeah. But either way, that would be after the events of the Enterprise D. Maybe Data is commanding the Enterprise F. There are plenty of letters in the alphabet. Actually, they actually did make an Enterprise F. Yeah, I know that. Odyssey class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you actually, yeah, you actually get to see, you actually get to see, um, it in uh, Star Trek Online again. And did you know that Captain's an Andorian? As in Blueskin? Yeah. Huh? No. And actually, that I, I actually like that though. Although now that I think of Andorians, I can't help but think of Transformers Prime. Hmm. Actually, the guy who voices Ratch is the same Andorian in Enterprise. He would have been a he would have been a crewmate. Hmm. Had they gotten more than just five seasons on Enterprise, mm-hmm. that's one of my disappointments. And we could have gotten the origin of the Borg Queen. We could have. Like, oh, we I, really could have, but I want to be. I, in the, I, I guess it just wasn't very popular, especially with that final episode. I want to be in the. I don't care. I want to be in the alternate universe that has those. What I would assume two more seasons of Enterprise. And we have and we have an Andorian crewmate on Enterprise. It would be cool. Yes. N- no pun intended to the Andorians. Uh, I- <laughs> no pun intended. It took me Star Trek Online to learn that they live on a frozen planet. I think kind of gave it away for me was their was their blue skin. Honestly, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't have necessarily thought that. I just would have thought blue skin. Okay, you have blue skin. Well, kind of like a green Orion slave girl. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, 
Come could, on. You could, you could live on a planet with three suns, but then you'd be a Namekian. Three sun? I thought it was a joke in Team Four Star. No. Namek, the original Namek had three suns. Okay. Which is why their skin was that way and why they bled purple. What is that? What? It's due to their biology. But you just, you just said, I thought you just said that it has some, the sun had to deal with it. Yeah, their, their sun has to deal with a lot of their planet's uh, ecology. Is that, is that right? Ecology? It's cause it's not kind of, yeah, ecology. But whenever it comes to them themselves, um, if you actually have seen the original Dragon Ball compared to Dragon Ball Z, his blood changes from red to purple. Right. Originally, because he was supposed to be conceived as a demon, but eventually he turns out to be an alien, the Namekians bled purple, <coughs> while okay. he bled red. Mm. Is That one was <clears throat> because of the three suns that surround Namek. I guess it emitted something from, from all three of the rays, combining with the atmosphere of Namek, that, this, that the blood is purple. Okay. At least that's my understanding of it. It's been a long time since I last read that article. Right. But it was supposed to explain the reason why Piccolo's blood changes from red to purple. To me, it sounds flawed. Since it should have gone back to red. But I guess they just didn't want to ruin continuity error. I don't know. I don't know. Either well, way. Let's Green Ryan's slave girl, I guess you're a Namekian. <laughs> Alright, fine. Oh, well, um, wait, no, you're not a Namekian. They don't have, they don't have females. What? I thought... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I thought you were about to say that Orions don't have females. No, 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 no. Um, let's see. Although I did like that they did that in, in Enterprise where the it's the slave girls are actually in charge of the men. Yeah. I really like that. I wouldn't mind them reincorporating that, like, in a later series of where a similar situation where basically history starts to repeat itself a little bit, but then they have to learn from from their instances in Enterprise and the original series. Mm. And hell, maybe even one of the Orion crewmates actually be, actually become, yeah, one of the Orion people becomes a crewmate. Mm. Okay. Um, another pilot idea, like, I don't know if this is a weird one, but another kind of show that I maybe want from the sh from Star Trek is maybe a comedy idea, sort of. Like when you say comedy, comedy idea, what what goes to your mind whenever you say that? I need I need to ask because uh, there's certain comedy that would be appropriate for Star Trek and some that wouldn't be. I guess you have a point like, there. Like with the uh, alternate reality, the comedy works. I guess it. Okay, I. All right, maybe. Okay. And sometimes with Enterprise and or, or with Next Generation, yes, the comedy works there too. It would depend on the type of comedy that you're looking for. Text message. Oh. Pause it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um. Okay. When I say comedy, I guess I, like maybe there was. All right. Maybe there wasn't an easy way to segue into that because I do know that like, like. They haven't really done any dedicated comedy stuff, I guess. I mean, I guess you, when you really think about it, Mud could have been considered comic relief. Mm. Or whenever they did Troubles with Tribbles, whenever they brought that into DS... Wasn't it DS9? Uh, they did a DS9 episode with Troubles with Tribbles. Yeah, that's not, that's not the, if they were to do that again, that might be a little homage to the original. Mm -hmm. But if they did, it would be kind of predictable. It would have to be at a specific time, like it was for tr the Troubles with Tribbles yeah. crossover. Like I know that was done for a special occasion, right? The thirtieth anniversary. Like, so if they, if they were to do that, it would only make sense that, to have that during another anniversary. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, because like I do not like. All right, two. Oh. What? I have no idea how they would do it. But if someone had created the Doomsday Machine, or if the species that created, not not created, wasn't the Doomsday Machine like an organic being? From what I know, from what I remember on that episode, um, the Doomsday Machine came, was 
Kirk theorized the Doomsday Machine came from another galaxy and traveled to our... Own. Okay. What if someone had made another one, but but the one that we saw in the original was only a small one? Hmm. What well, if there was a bigger one? And more deadly? Well, I don't know, but I've seen a bigger Borg ship. That... Or we could have that too, a larger Borg ship. However, of course, both of this and actually the Doomsday Machine being reactivated, I've seen inside of the um, Star Trek Online. So, but then again, that's not. I don't see how I don't see how they'd be able to being reactivated when it was destroyed. Because I remember it floating as a as a lifeless corpse. I always thought it was destroyed because of the sister ship of the Enterprise constellation. Isn't that the same? The constellation. Maybe, I don't necessarily remember, but I just remember it being floating dead. Ugh. But then again, however, to counter, to play the devil advocate with what I said, that was on the, that was on the game, not a show. I, I don't know enough about Star Trek Online, sadly. That, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I, I know you were cleaning that up, but I didn't know that that had happened like on the game. That's why I said it, or mentioned it. Or what would be even more frightening is the Borg found the corpse of the Doomsday Machine. Ugh. They... They'd alter it, but... They, I kind of don't want them to. Yeah, you don't want them to for what reason? What's your reasoning behind it? It might be the same reasoning as mine. Um... Near, okay, let's see. To me, that just spells more bad. Bad as in, like, bad in terms of n not wanting it to happen, or bad as in it would be a bad idea? Impossible to stop. Yeah, that'd be the point to it. Uh, well that, I feel like that would be a long movie, for, long movie script. Or a long, or an entire season, just like how... The Zindi was an entire season. Oh. Like, could you just imagine, like, a Borgified Doomsday Machine? That would be hella frightening. I would love to see it, <laughs> but it would be so frightening. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, let's see. Another reason why I brought up the comedy idea is all because, like, uh, two other, two of the uh, three remaining pilots I'm aware of is one would have been, let's see, a Frank, an animated TV show based on the DS9 Ferengi as kids. Um, both uh, Rom and Quark. The only way I can see that working would be like an animated short, not like the original Star Trek animated series. Mm -hmm. I can see that like maybe being like a few, ep a few minutes long shorts. Kind of like, like like literal shorts, mm -hmm. almost like um, the original Clone Wars, but they were just like five minutes oh, long. Right, I could see that being a thing if if we were to go with that, because hmm. that way it's not too much for you to pay attention, but it's enough for you to get enough entertainment out of it. Right, and then the other one was like a t like a their pilot idea that never got made was like a sitcom. Or a Star Trek sitcom based on uh, not Deanna Troy but her mom. Oh, oh! I know you're talking about it. Oh, I'd be afraid. <laughs> I'd be afraid. But this one, the one that I've had for the longest time, has probably been done in the comics. Mm -hmm. Um. I did that I had since I was younger and I found the animated series. Not I mean, the original series. Why am I thinking animated? Um, is a series that focuses on Christopher Pike. Oh. Like, the only thing that we know is that he was, that he was in the original pilot. Not to be seen again until the Menagerie episode. Right. Where he gets his happy ending. And with... Christopher Pike in the alternate reality. Right. Whenever he doesn't get his happy ending. Right. I would want to see a series that was him as the first Enterprise captain. 
Uh, I personally would love to see that. I mean, the only thing that would contradict is the fact that Spock wouldn't be smiling. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the, origi- the original episode of that, The Cage. No, I haven't. Not yet. He, I think it's on Netflix somewhere. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is. I've seen the original series on there. But... I know the original series on there, but a lot of places that I've seen that carried the series don't have the original pilot. Hmm. The original pilot, the quote unquote original pilot, is to boldly go or where no man has gone before. That was the the, the first episode by a lot of vendors. The cage was the pilot, where it showed a different captain. The uniforms were slightly different, right. and it showed the big bulging head people. Forget their names. I am sorry that sounds racist, <laughs> but the cage had Christopher Pike. As the captain, hmm. and Spock, be the early concept of a Vulcan, was smiling uh-huh. and laughing. Huh. So that would be the only contradiction I would see. Otherwise, I would love to see that, even though it would be considered a prequel, like Discovery. Right. I would love to honestly just see a series that involved Christopher Pike as the original captain hmm. before Kirk came in, like, it, or it could be like a whole thing where. Pike is the main focus and Kirk is the side focus where he's going to the academy. It could be that kind of a thing. Hmm. Again, it's still a prequel, but it was something that would be kind of original since they haven't done that before. Okay. All right. I got at least before wrapping up, I got at least two uh, two ideas, uh, pilot ideas, that I, or two ideas that they could probably do. Mm-hmm. One idea that is like uh, maybe just trying to show civilian life in the Federation. Because I can't imagine them being last long, but mm, well, okay, may, or maybe not seven seasons, as that to me seems to be the golden number for the sh- for the series for e- each series. Yeah, but at the very least, like we're always. Always focusing on the Federation, or he's, or some another. part of it. Yeah. So, like, I'm, I, I kind of want to hear like maybe a story where where like uh, like for example like all right DS Nine takes you know has like war time has uh, has war right. Mm-hmm. Yet I kind of maybe want to hear have an episode where they go like, oh yeah that. Dominion war that's going on uh, out in the Alpha Quadrant. Oh boy! Well, uh, that, I hope Georgie's doing all right. That honestly sounds a lot like a different take on Caprica. Caprica. Caprica, which was the prequel series to Battlestar Galactica, oh. where it was before the Cylon War with, with, with the humans, mm-hmm. where they're actually creating the Cylons, but it was all politics. It only lasted one season, and there was um, meant there, there was intent for there to be a second season, which would introduce th- the actual fa- foundings of the Cylon uh, uprising. Because hmm. in the in the first season, that kind of like shows the in, the politics between the Adam the Adama family and like other places like in in society. Mm-hmm. It, what you're saying is kind of similar to that, but I could also see that one kind of like being a, poli- a, a political show. Like, obviously, whenever it comes to the Federation, it's not all you know, butterflies, unicorns, and rainbows. There's got to be some kind of interior politics that are going on. Yeah, well, I'm, I had more along the lines of civilian life. Well, it could, there could be that too. Like, that could be the main premise of it. Mm. But there could also be like certain politics that people aren't really abiding by, and they're noticing it. Mm. And it could be like not even on Earth; it could be like in other planets in the Federation. Mm. Yeah, true. Like you know, like there, like I've heard a couple of interact interactive games that were based on Klingon stories. So, like how the Klingons had to adjust to the Federation. I can't imagine that gone being a smooth, a smooth process. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. And here's the juiciest, juiciest idea that I just want. And I don't juicy. Get, yeah, I mean, like, I came up with it a, like a day or two ago, and 
as far as I'm concerned, it would be an entire show, yet it would only probably only, yet I feel like it would only last like five minutes or something. <laughs> okay. A Q show. Oh God! Yeah, like, I can see that being a spinoff. I can also see that being like at least a one or two season spinoff. Yeah, like that, that would be great. Look, and oh, I, and I'd be happy if they just only had five minutes and it just called it a show and just calling five minutes a show and it, 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 five minutes of Q. Yeah, look, look it, five minutes of Q. Look, yes, and look, all the like. All right, I, whether they, they got John Delancey back or not, I don't care uh, or whatever. But it was it would have to be R Q. Or this character would be, and actually, okay, for or for sake of description, let's just say that they got the the John Delancey reprise mm-hmm. Q again. He'd be like, and it would just be like, "Hello, I'm back," and yes, your Q is back. He's breaking the fourth wall rather than just bending reality. Or, and, or even like, or even to expand like that was like, "Hello, I'm back." And for those of you who don't know me, you must. I can only just imagine what your life is without me in, in your life. <laughs> right, yeah. and It must be absolutely boring. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Like that. That's, a, that's, that's, actually what, that's exactly what I want. And like, you know, and maybe like, you know, it's like, you know, oh yes, I look older, but it's just so then I, or, but the end, like, uh, just to say like, you know, I look older because you're all growing so old every so much, every second. I wanted to join in the fun. I wanted to experience what it's like to age. Yeah, yeah, and just like that one uh, android character that was that was with Picard. <laughs> yeah, and then like you know, and I'd just be happy with just that, and like you'd be like you know, something, and just saying like you wanted to watch the rest of the show. You're living it. <laughs> That's what I want. Like that, if there, or even. Well, that, uh, not, maybe not in such of a literal sense as I'm saying, but like if you don't know what this is about, then, then go watch this one episode. You'll you'll know what I mean. <laughs> or like this, 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 it was this one story. It, it was uh, way back, like maybe so many years ago, but it was in actual time, like in actual time, like compared to like whenever it is now, to whenever it first aired. Does that kind of make sense? Maybe not actual time, real time. Like, like for example, like in the best example I can think of is Tron versus, versus Tron Legacy, how that takes place twenty years after the original. Mm-hmm. In real time, it actually does take place twenty years after the original movie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if he were to talk about it, some of the instances that he mentions, like, like for brief moments, it, he could say, "If you don't know what I'm talking about, there was something that happened on so many years ago, and it would be the air date of that episode where he featured in." Only issue there is just that I don't want him to like you know like, not that he couldn't reference something but something that happened but I want but because the Q continuum takes place both then and now and all such I don't want him to say like it happened five years ago when after five well, that's years what, that's what I mean like not we, it doesn't have to be like in the literal sense of what I'm saying oh. but something similar to along those lines. Oh. Or if someone who doesn't know Star Trek is watching, like, a five-year-old who doesn't know Star Trek very much, but they're watching this episode, they don't know what it is he's talking about. Yeah. But if you were to mention at least the vaguest description of what happened in the episode that involved him, like, whenever he was expelled from the Q Continuum for that small amount of time, or whenever he got a son and he had Janeway look after him. Yeah. It could be like those moments where he could say to the audience, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go see this. You'll understand. Yeah, like, that would be, like, if that would be, could be one, if that could be the one th- one thing I could get, one thing I could get more of, if that's the only thing I could get, then that's how, then I'd just be happy with that. Right? That'd be a very good comedy section right there. Yeah. Because Q is all sorts of comedy. Yeah. Comedy with a capital Q. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, is there anything else? If I'm good. I think that just about satisfies what I would think in terms of brainstorming. Like between the possibility of Zindi joining the Federation, the spin-offs, Pike, all these different things. I, I think they could all be decent ideas. I doubt they'll ever come to fruition. Yeah. Uh, 
Ah. And for all we know, there could be some fan fiction out there that is coming up with these ideas. Ah, perhaps so. Or maybe we're in someone's fan fiction coming up with these ideas. You know, we're in the hologram. Oh boy, you know that's uh, that's scary. that's kind of scary to know because it's like, it's like actual theory. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, it's scary when you really think about it. Uh, no, there's an actual theory that's in, that says that we're a simulation. Yeah, I know. It's scary when you really think about it. Uh, uh, and all it makes me think of is the Big Bang theory. Whenever he says, "Well, I wonder what kind of unlucky kid got got the character with." The as the the inhaler and glasses DLC. That was in season ten, I think. Hmm. All right. Well. Uh. No. <laughs> all right. Well, beyond that, I'd just pretty much say if you have any ideas, comment below or something, and we'll talk to you later next time or something. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll make this a little bit more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't know what I'm look, what word is I'm looking for. They have some of these more often. Yeah, I got yeah, I I got other ideas. Although I don't Or other discussions as well. Yeah. Alright, well Zenfell reporting out and Bye. <laughs>